Hello, my name is Jadlin Yep, and I work in the Bowerman Sports Science Center. My project investigated the effect of an oral protein bolus on urine concentrating ability during prolonged mild hypohydration. So to break that down, hypohydration is a state of low body water. Oftentimes, it is represented as 1-5% to 5 lower than normal. Urine concentrating ability describes the kidney's ability to conserve or excrete water. This is what determines levels of too much or too little fluid intake. The consumption of high-protein foods during a hydrated state, also known as euhydration, improves the kidney's ability to concentrate urine by reducing free water clearance and conserving water. Free water clearance is used to quantify how diluted or concentrated the urine is. Literature says during excess hydration, this response may be lessened by reduced after-meal changes in renal hemodynamics upon oral protein consumption. But it is not known if urine concentrating ability is altered when oral protein is consumed during mild hypohydration, a physiological state associated with negative free water clearance. The purpose of this study was to test the hypothesis that oral protein loading during mild hypohydration attenuates productions in free water clearance compared to during euhydration. With regards to our methods, we analyzed 20 subjects, 9 female and 11 male, in a randomized crossover design. Each subject performed a hypohydrated and a euhydrated protocol as a 24-hour stimulus. The hypohydrated protocol required 24 hours deprivation of fluid in high water content foods, while the euhydration protocol followed normal fluid in food consumption. When performing the protocols, we had subjects come in 24 hours prior to oral protein consumption and 24 hours after the study to measure a change in body mass. During the experiment, participants consumed a whey protein shake which was determined by one gram of protein and 10 milliliters of water per kilogram of body mass. Blood and urine samples were collected at baseline, 75 minutes and 150 minutes post protein consumption. We further performed free water clearance analysis by calculating the freezing point depression of both blood and urine. Moving to the results section, data was analyzed using a two-way ANOVA with factors of sex, hydration, and the interaction between sex and hydration. Now, I would like to orient you to my figures. In figures A, C, and D, data is deaggregated by sex with circles representing males and squares representing females. The white bars display euhydration and the black bars are hypohydration. In figure A, it represents the change in body mass before and after the study to estimate how much fluid was lost. Our findings show there was a main effect of hydration. Specifically, there were greater reductions in body mass when the subjects were hypohydrated compared to euhydrated. This confirms what we expected to see because during the euhydration protocol, we didn't expect a change for the subjects to be hypo or hyperhydrated. Moving over to figure B, this shows the changes in free water clearance over time, with the euhydrated trial represented by white circles and the hypohydrated trial represented by black circles. The asterisk shows differences between conditions and the letter B shows differences from baseline. With this data, we see a main effect of time. As the time is increased, there's a change on the whole from the start of the study compared to the end. There is also a main effect of hydration, which indicates that euhydration is different than hypohydration as represented by the asterisk and we see an effect of interaction between time and hydration, which reveals there was a greater effect examining the factors together rather than each individual factor separately. Given an oral protein bolus in a euhydrated state, we stated there would be a decrease in free water clearance, which was what the results showed, represented by the B over the white circles at 75 minutes and 150 minutes. The subject started with positive free water clearance, which tells us that urine is hypoosmotic compared to the blood. During this time, urine is more dilute. At the 150 time point, we see negative free water clearance, which indicates water excreted by the urine is more concentrated than the blood, and responses in the body are seen as water conservation. When looking at the hypohydrated state given oral protein bolus, baseline showed a negative free water clearance 
but there was no difference between the 150 minute time point and baseline, which means free water clearance didn't further decrease during hypohydration. This can indicate we already maximally stimulated urine concentrating ability and free water clearance is as negative as it can get. It also does not appear that protein can be used as a rehydration solution as it does not affect urine concentrating ability. In conclusion, given an oral protein bolus, it does not enhance urine concentrating ability during prolonged mild hypohydration. It is unclear whether the lack of further reductions in free water clearance during hypohydrated as opposed to euhydrated reflects a ceiling effect of having reached the physiological maximum ability to concentrate urine, whereby the already negative free water clearance is not able to be further reduced with an oral protein bolus. Thank you for listening, and I would like to take this time to thank the Bowman Sports Science Center and my mentor for their continual support in giving me this opportunity. I would also like to thank the Phil and Penny Knight Campus for Accelerating Scientific Impact and Tom and Kathy Huey for funding my research project.